give you the last look. Unless I tell you to keep my eyes open. Because I can see y'all rascals back. Amen. God bless you. Sense of humor is a medicine. It's a medicine for, for the soul. So today is old subject way back. Going to poor as uh, we now uh, share this with you uh, for today's message. Amen. Bearing living people. And I want to uh, open up with a quote from St. Augustine. Uh, I just used the phraseology of what time is it? But I'm going to read the quote for you. Just you know, you hear it as an opening statement. Uh, and I just want you to hear it because it's going to kind of put you in the spirit of, of the message that I want to bring for today. Uh, this is what St. Augustine said. Would you listen to it? There will come a time when God will judge. Amen. When God will yes. condemn. That's right. That's right. When God will yes. pronounce sentencing upon. Yeah. But the time is not now. Yes. I'm going to say it again because I want you to pick up on the spirit. Mm -hmm. There will come a time when God will judge, not you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. All right. Yes, come on. So for those who judge you, you're doing God's work. Yes. Uh -huh. You ain't capable of that. Amen. 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 There will come a time when God will judge, when God will condemn, when God will pronounce sentencing upon but the time is not now. Yes, Lord. Is what he goes on to say. Now is the time to save. Now is the time to heal. Now is the time to forgive and to restore. Now is the time to minister. And on and on and on. Here's how he concluded. It's bad enough when people struggle, when people sin and have to deal with it. But it's ugly when we, I mean in the Christian community, want to destroy them for the same thing that God is willing to forgive. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Is that right? I can sit down right there and say that's the right thing. That spoke to me. I'm going to read that again. There will come a time when God will judge. When God will condemn. When God will pronounce sentencing upon him. But now is not the time. Now is the time to say to heal, to forgive, to restore, to witness, to minister, so forth and so on. And then he says it's bad enough when people struggle. It's bad enough when people sin and have to wrestle with missing the mark and so forth. But it's ugly when we, the Christian community, want to destroy them for the same thing that God is willing to forgive us. Yes. This is how he concludes this. If religion means anything, it means reverence for God and respect for humanity. Why do you always want to condemn Come on, nah, nah. Why are you always messing with me? Mm. <laughs> not me, because if you mess with me, I'm going to mess back. Yeah, we know you push back. We know you push back. You know you push back. Mm. Push back. Push back. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. But he said that the Christian community, if our religion means anything, means anything, it means 
reverence for God and respect for humanity. humanity. So let's read for the scripture for, for this very St. John 11. Familiar passage, you know the story. I'm going to pull up two verses. This is where I want to end up at, and I'll walk you through the rest. And Jesus said, of course, he was talking to the sisters. Mm -hmm. After having gotten to the burial place of Lazarus, who had already been in the grave several days, and he finally got there and arrived. And he's, this is the statement that he's making now to the sisters, and of course there are those who are witnessing uh, the statement. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Mm -hmm. Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Then he asks a question, mm. do you believe this? Yes, mm. wow. yes Do you believe? This. I, I, I pulled that up because I, that's going to kind of put me around where I want to where I want to focus it for today. So let's start with the key word, and I'm not going to give you all of the breakdown, but I'll give you a sufficient amount because Jesus used these <coughs> used language kind of in a figurative metaphoric sense. A lot of the Bible is metaphors, language, you know, pa parables and all of that. That's what it is. It's talking about natural things to convey a spiritual meaning. And so we come up with things like the word parable. So he uses a certain terminology uh, all through the discourse of uh, this conversation with his disciples. Our friend Lazarus, you know, sick. Our friend Lazarus sleeps. Then he says our friend Lazarus is dead or died. He goes through this series of, of words and he actually is saying the same thing but that they were missing it. So, so I'm not going to give you all of these words but I just want to give you a, a, a breakdown because even when he uses the word sickness, again, he's speaking in a metaphoric way, understand context, because he used sickness in that way as quite natural, it's feeble, he's in a feeble position, and that can be a body or mind. He, this word sickness translates an infirmity, but there's a excerpt right there on the side of the parenthesis because the context determines the meaning. So sickness is an infirmity, but here it means also an infirmity of the will. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Oh, that's good. So you can describe sickness in one sense as an infirmity of the body, mm -hmm. but you can also describe sickness as an infirmity of the will. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You have mental illness, which is a sickness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can be spiritually sick. There's a word for that as well. Here, he kind of works between, vacillating between. So he's, he's using some terminology, but he's referencing our friend Lazarus has an infirmity of the will, mm -hmm. meaning that, that his condition won't allow him to pick himself up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. Stay with me here, because this is... It translates as a disability. Mm -hmm. He's disabled. Mm -hmm. oh. My God. They didn't get that. So he shift to where he's asleep. Mm -hmm. And we know we use the word sleep referencing death, yeah. those who died, that they are sleep in the Lord and they may rest from their labor and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so he, he shifts from the terminology of sickness, vacillation, moved to, uh, he, well, he's sleep. And they were like, well, if he's sleep, then, uh, you know, he's okay, then he mm -hmm. let him wake up on his own because they want to kill us there. Mm -hmm. And they don't need us going there and let him work on his own. But even when he shifts to the word sleep, it's in a symbolic way because it, it, could, it could mean actually with reference to death. But here, it translates from a word meaning, meaning, Subsolent or spiritual torpor. Mm. 
So he's he's in a a self solid position in life or in spiritual topar. You know, that it's like I'm almost locked up in a prison. Yeah. I can see you, but you can't see me. Uh, I'm in a state of uh, of what? Um, I'm lying in this body. I'm conscious of you in the room, but I can't express myself. Look at how he's working with these words and language trying to convey just a lot more to that. And, and it was like, <laughs> let him get up on his own. Then. <laughs> Leave him alone. Because again, you want to go back there and they sought to kill you the last time. And they're going to kill us too. We with you. So let's, let's let him wake up on his own. He looks at him and he does what, you know, often you realize y'all don't get it. Mm. So he speaks, the scripture says, more plainly. Yes. If, so, if, if, so, so right. let, let, look at the language now. Yeah. If he's speaking more plainly, he's saying the same thing in a more simpler manner. Yes. Right, right, yes. right. Yes. He didn't say he spoke differently. On, he didn't man. change the conversation. He simply simplified his meaning. Because y'all not getting it. So to speak plainly is not to change your conversation. It's simply to break down and simplify what you're saying. That's speaking more plainly. So mean this, and I'm going to move on, that, that he, he, he meant what he started with, he means the same thing. He's simply changing his words because you all are not getting it, I'm the disciples. So I'm going to change my language and words. So he moved from sickness to sleep and to dead, but he actually means the same thing. Uh, he's talking about Lazarus, same thing. Here comes the, the translation where I want to get to, because even when you move the word uh, sleep, it breaks down from a root word, hupo, H-U-P-O, actually means to be in, a, in an inferior position in life, in a state of being insensible or insensibility, ins uh, I'm sorry, inactivity. So that could be mental, physically, spiritual, whatever. So he's in an inactive state. He's in an inferior position. Oh, he's, 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 he's in a position that he's unable to do anything about his condition. Yes, Lord. So they express a kind of consciousness, like being conscious, but I'm almost, my, I'm in a paralyzed state. I can see everything, I can hear everything, but I can't respond to nothing. Yes. This is what he's getting at, inactive. And when they still didn't get it, he shift to, okay, Lazarus dead. Mm -hmm. More plainly. Now here's the thing. There are different words for dead. Mm -hmm. And when we use the, 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 the most popular word, which we get right here as well, necros, where we get ne uh, neck necromancy is what one way pronounce it, necromancy, which is dead spirits or messing with dead spirits, worshiping, ne necromancing is, you know, entertaining dead spirits and so forth and so on, but necros has to deal with dead. So he uses the root word necros, which can be spiritual or physical or literal or phys fig figuratively, but he uses that word necros, which means that, oh, well, wait a minute now, he, he's dead, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. But he did not use necros by itself, mm -hmm. meaning dead. He conditioned it with a prefix of apo, A-P-O, prefix. The difference between we say pre-something means before, post-something means right. after. Right. So if I use a word and put the prefix pre, then that, that, you know I'm talking about before something happened. If I say right. post, I'm talking about afterwards. Right. So that prefix determined, you know, something about that word. Right. He qualifies the word necros here with a, a word apo, and so he gets this word right here, two words combined, apothenesco. And that's the word that he used. Apo actually means apart from, under, 
away from, out of time, space, condition. So he's not saying that he's dead, he's saying that he is apart from death, mm -hmm. out of time where there is no death. Mm -hmm. He's in a subsilent, yes. inferior position, conscious but can't respond. Mm -hmm. He can see you but you can't see him. Mm -hmm. He is under. And so what that translates is when you put it together in this context, it, let's go, it actually means to, 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 well, I got the word right here. It actually means living beneath life. Look at what Jesus is saying to them. Well, he's sick. Let him 